Good morning on Saturday, and it's a pleasure and a blessing to be with you, and I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. We're in the next section of Romans 11, from verses 11 through 24, and as I promised yesterday, this fits in with yesterday's reading uh, in a, when it comes to this predestination and election thing, and I hope that we can solve some questions there as we go through this. We're going to sing, because it talks about uh, Gentiles like us being like branches that are grafted in to the to the uh, the original plant, wild, wild plants that are grafted into the cultivated one. The only hymn I could find that had the branches grafted in was Chief of Sinners Though I Be. Um, uh, doesn't totally fit and yet and yet it is about us coming being privileged to come to Christ as Paul the author here considered himself the worst of sinners and yet and yet saved by Jesus chief of sinners though i be jesus shed his blood to me died that i might live on high lives that i might never as the branches to the vine, I am his and he is mine. Oh, the height of Jesus' love, higher than the heavens above, deeper than the depths of sea, lasting as eternity. Love that found me, wondrous thought, found me when I sought him not. Only Jesus can impart, balm to heal the wounded heart, peace that flows from sin forgiven, joy that lifts the soul to heaven, faith and hope to walk with God in the way that Enoch trod. Good morning. Gentiles grafted in. So I ask, did they stumble in order that they might fall? By no means. Rather, through their trespass, salvation has come to the Gentiles so as to make Israel jealous. Now, if their trespass means riches for the world, and if their failure means riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their full inclusion mean? Now, I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? If the dough offered as first fruits is holy, so is the whole lump. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, although a wild olive shoot, were grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing root of the olive tree, do not be arrogant toward the branches. If you are, remember, it is not you who support the root, but the root that supports you. Then you will say, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief, but you stand fast through faith. So do not become proud, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, neither will he spare you. Note then the kindness and the severity of God. Severity toward those who have fallen, but God's kindness to you provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. And even they, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in 
for God has the power to graft them in again. For if you were cut from what is by nature a wild olive tree and grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these, the natural branches, be grafted back into their own olive tree? So you might, you might think that uh, I'm a little obsessed with this election predestination controversy, and, and I apologize if it feels that way, but it's um, this last week, our devotions certainly from Romans 9 through 11 have, have wrestled with that, why some are saved and not others. Um, there's a very practical reason for us to, to dwell on this. Um, I, I talked to a dear friend who was with her father when they went to visit her uncle, her father's brother, in the hospital. And, and her dad was very troubled as they came away uh, because, because his brother was, was turning away from faith in Christ. And, or it seemed so to him. Of course, we don't know who has faith and who doesn't, who's just wrestling with faith. And based on what they say, we can't necessarily see their heart. But he was, he, he wondered out loud if maybe, maybe his brother just wasn't one of the elect. Uh, you know, because the, you've tried to share the gospel, you tried to persuade, tried to, tried to show Christ. And, and there was this skepticism and this resistance. And my friend, his daughter, said, you know, Jesus wants everybody to be saved. And everybody still has the opportunity. Hope you recognize how important that is. Otherwise, otherwise we see people who are rejecting Christ and, well, they never had a chance. They're just doomed. That's just them, right? And we might as well not even witness to them because who knows? Uh, what, what good would it do? No, it's quite the opposite. As we look at these two sections together, so, so recall yesterday's. Um, Paul has says this difficult phrase about, you know, some of the Jews had rejected the Savior and they were hardened in their rejection. And, and I've made the argument that, that this hardening is what happens when we reject, that it's a natural consequence of that, uh, that and that God expresses this that he, uh, the rest were hardened. The elect obtained uh, what Israel was seeking. The elect obtained the Savior, but the rest were hardened. Um, and yet, even in that hardening, God is seeking, in everything God does, he is seeking our salvation. So now, in today's reading, uh, Paul says, let's see, now, if their trespass, that if the, if the sins of these Jewish people who rejected Jesus, means riches for the world, because now the Gentiles have the Savior, and if their failure means riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their inclusion mean? Now, wait a minute. How could they be included if they have been rejected, if they're not the elect, if they're the condemned, if they were double predestined, you know, God created them to be rejected? But, but they can still be included. He says, I'm speaking to you Gentiles now. Uh, I magnify my ministry among the Gentiles in order to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. So the, the note that I have written in my Bible, I have a little dashed line right through these two texts, uh, a circle. And how can this circular sort of grace fit with this idea of you're either elect or you're not elect? No, he says... Uh, Grace came, and some among the Jews uh, showed that they were elect, that is, that they came to faith, and others rejected Christ. And, yep, they're condemned. But yet, Paul says, I make much of my ministry among the Gentiles so that those Jews will be jealous of the Gentiles, and maybe they'll come and give Christ another look and come to faith. Uh, though, so even those who re were rejected may yet come to faith. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? If those who rejected Christ now come to faith, then that will be an even greater blessing 
for the world. And we see that as, as people who had rejected Christ come to faith today and become the most powerful witness to faith in Christ now. Uh, so then he then he's warning the Gentiles. Some of these branches were broken off. The the uh, the the branch of the tree of Jesse, you know, the the branches of the Jews were broken off, and the Gentiles are grafted into the people of God. And he says they might feel kind of proud about that. Uh, branches, he's he's pointing out. Remember, you you don't support the root; the root supports you. And so your faith, our faith comes out of these roots of Judaism. They come out of these Old Testament roots. We don't, we're not just a New Testament people. We are an Old and New Testament people. God's whole word. But he says, well, you might say, well, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. But he says, if those branches were broken off because of their unfaithfulness, because of their rejection of Christ, then you could be broken off as well if you are unfaithful. So though you are elect, though you have faith in Christ and have salvation, Yet you also can still reject Christ. And therefore you are to, to be cautious. And then he says, uh, note the kindness and the severity of God. Severity toward those who have fallen. But God's kindness to you. Kindness that is so, so great that he is still desiring to graft back in those branches that were cut off. Which would be dead, wouldn't they? but they can be grafted back into the olive tree. In verse 24. You are not doomed. You are not doomed to be lost. You are not just fated to be saved. No, your, your salvation is the consequence, the result of God's constant work. He is never. Uh, I think of. I think of my mom. We were running all over the neighborhood, and you're doing this and that. And yet, my mom was always, though she was not always. We couldn't always see her there. She was always aware, always looking, always watching out for us. Your heavenly Father is always, always providing for you, desiring you, leading you, working in you through good and bad, through whatever is happening in the world, leading you and. Others as well, those that you will, you yourself have rejected and would say, well, they're hardened. They'll never come to faith. God has not given up. God will never give up until at last, until there is that last day. When finally, as C.S. Lewis puts it, God says to those who would reject him, when God says to them, thy will be done, you desire to be separate from me. This this puzzle of election is that the the word the wording that God uses. Um, he talks he talks of it in terms of election and predestination to show that that our belonging to Him is not an accident. It is it is the result of His divine will. And and we uh, as believers we labor with God for this incredible purpose that that someone might have life eternal i hope that fills your prayers today in gratitude that you have that gift and in pleading with god that by his holy spirit you may be a part of someone else being grafted in or being grafted back in into the vine where all our life comes from Heavenly Father, bless this day. We give, give thanks to you that we are chosen by you. We know you desire to choose every other human life and draw them to yourself. Lord, let us be your instruments. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Blessings on your Saturday.